sorry for the delay tonight, but um, I'm going to try to do an uh, impromptu, um, let's see, Rune, Rune episode tonight. <laughs> Stop my music. Um, so, today was um, a very fun-filled day, and I got a little... Uh, lost in the sauce, but, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm here, um, so, tonight, on the list, Uruz was last, so, that leaves us on to Thrissa's, um, T-H is the sound that it makes, like, as in Thor, which it is very much associated with Thor, um, deal with me everybody tonight too because I am going to be driving <laughs> and doing this at the same time I mean in the truck but not driving because that would be totally unsafe <laughs> um anyway so Thurissa's um I don't have my notes with me but that's okay because it is one I am fairly familiar with um Thurissa's, like I said before, is um, associated with Thor, but also um, more so of the hammer than actually Thor himself. Uh, Mjolnir is that force of destruction. Uh, you know, it's uh, unbridled strength. It brings down the powers of the heavens, um, it is the archetypal protective strength type of rune, um, so, you know, you think of Thor, you think of the hammer, you think of the, the qualities that, and the characteristics that it embodies, um, this, like, celestial power, the power of lightning, the power of thunder, uh, the, Thrissa's making the TH noise is synonymous with uh, thunder as well. So we're talking about celestial power. Um, so it is a good rune to call on if you are anticipating a struggle or a battle. Um, and not necessarily in the physical sense um, as with you know a lot of things it very much could be to protect you from an enemy to protect your home um, to keep that protective element in there also but as Thor is you know the strong arm and the protector of the gods um, it is very much so the defensive act of, of protection um, Anytime I think of protection and that kind of inherent trait to want to protect um, those you care about, those you love around you, I am automatically reminded of the wolf. Like, the wolf um, is very much so that energy of protecting your, your uh, pack, protecting your community. Um, protecting your, you know, your brethren, your kinfolk, um, and I think that's, that it shows the nobility in protection as opposed to the savagery, um, as we think, like, it doesn't necessarily need to be a violent thing, but just that kind of slipping into that guardian role, um, so, I mean, I, I, that's just things that kind of came to me as I've been thinking about Thurissa's today. Um, of course, you know, with, with Uru is also meaning strength. I th you know, they're, they're both very much strength affiliated runes. Um, the difference being where in Uru's, I think it's more of that strength to overcome an obstacle and whereas in Thurisa's it is um, much more to do with um, protecting in 
almost like a, I want to say a parental role, but not necessarily always parental, but kind of that 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 role that we take as protectors is like um, you know your mama bear, your papa bear. You're gonna protect your your kin, um, and I think it's also a good thing. Um, especially for people that are newer into practicing any type of craft to talk about protection. Um, so obviously protection in the physical realm, but we're talking about protection in the otherworldly realm as well. So I think it's a good reminder to people that we always need to think of our safety, our protection, um, the people around us, uh, their protection as well and how we can go about that um, protection for me takes on the form of if I'm in otherworldly travel um, it takes on the form of like a light shield um, some people think of it as like an egg or a bubble um, mine's kind of like I always imagine it kind of ovalish um, and when I when I walk these the other realms when I go into shamanic flight that's one of the first things I do when I enter that realm is a type of protection. Um, and it's not to seal me off from everything on the other side. Uh, because to think that I have the power to do that is, is, is nice. But honestly, there are things beyond what we can sense or feel, um, that can lead you astray. Um, but having that protection, having those backup measures um, in hand, um, talking about light shields, wards, um, you know, wards more so used in the physical realm, but can also be used in the otherworldly realm as well. Um, you can set wards in the other world um, as you say, uh, set up your sacred grove. Um, that's kind of moving more into Celtic type of stuff, but, um, I'm sure it seems, uh, pretty universal that with, sh with shamanic flight and entering another realm that we kind of have our safe havens, um, where we can go and, um, you know, work freely as we will. Um, so with that being said, I think it's, it's, and there's, there's a lot of runes that, that embody that kind of sense of protection. And Thurisaz is definitely not the only one. Um, the other one that comes uh, to mind is algaes as well. Um, I've always used algaes and seen algaes as a protective sigil for me. And something that I meditate on whenever I feel like... Um, I could be placing myself in, in any type of danger. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's like that too. And I get also the feeling of being connected to the gods, giving us that protection, being connected to Thor, establishing a relationship with, with Thor will give you confidence because Thor demands confidence. Um, Thor demands strength. Uh, Thor demands us protecting our kin, our community. Um, he is the working man's God. Um, so he was thought to, you know, watch over the crops and protect as well. Um, always, you know, he's always kind of had, uh, um, I think a soft spot for mortal man um and something that just came to mind too is that protective power of thor was something that was a big stepping stone into taking the directions that i do because when i was in the fires up north um in northern california um you know we were working long hours and Hey, I can, I can, you know, get up early with the best of them. I'm, I'm a military guy, but there was one day where I was just, you know, I had a long, 
restless night or whatever it was and um it might have been like a friday morning after a bardaga bar um <laughs> most likely and i was heading down the mountain into work and um you know i was starting to feel that those first throws of of nodding out almost getting tired and there were no electrical storms to be had in the area at the time um and it was probably who knows a mix of things but it definitely wasn't a natural occurrence um it was something that was very personal to me as i was heading down um the mountain is i started up in such a high elevation that i was above the clouds um it was like low level fog so I'm breaking through that last bit of low-level fog, and when I, and that's when it hit me that that tiredness, and um, all of a sudden I felt like I saw a strike of lightning go across the sky, and I smiled to myself and I just said Thor's name out loud. I said Thor, thank you, and as soon as I felt that, as soon as I said that, I felt just this wave of energy, um, like. I had main veins some coffee or something, you know, <laughs> um, it, and it's, that's what I think of when I think of that protective force of Thurisaz is that it's, it's very much, um, like when you're in the God's favor, those little signs or, um, sigils that may pop up or whatever that just make you want to keep going, um, that just that fill you with that strength to go through the rest of your day uh, so with the Rissaz, also you know I have my notes at home there are a lot of really cool meanings behind it that I'm missing probably um, but these are just what comes to mind right now and I feel like that's a pretty good presentation um, so I'm probably going to start losing reception because I'm getting up into the canyons here. Um, I apologize for the late, um, the late, late posting of this. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Sometimes we get wrapped up in our day-to-day -day stuff and uh, things just <laughs> kind of play out how they play out, you know. Um, but please, I, I, I know probably most people won't see this until the replay, and that's fine. Um, but if you have any questions on Thurisaz, uh, please feel free to ask. I will have my notes um, with me tomorrow throughout the weekend. So if anybody has any questions on Thurisaz, please feel free to ask. Um, I also thought... and. I thought of this today because especially we're in uh, uh, Freya's Apathet. So that's that's the first uh, eight runes, right? Starting with Fehu. So obviously Fehu is very representative of Freya. Um, and I, I'm sure I've kind of touched on this before, but I really want to get into the um, this duality of runes. Um, when we think of the runes, we think of Odin and the sacrifice that he made to himself, for himself, on that quest, that quest for knowledge. Um, so a lot of people would associate the runes with Odin, which is very true. There's an attachment to Odin, and there's a relationship that, that will open up as you discover the runes. But... The act of seeing into the future, the act of of the runes themselves, even Odin had to go through the water of Mimir's well to the bottom to to fetch the runes. The water water being a very feminine force, um, and you know just the the meat of knowledge still being a liquid, right? Um, even, even the combined, the combined, um, rune, which, which has all the runes within them, Frigga's web, 
Frigga is almost in some points, and I don't want to say exactly interchangeable, but Frigga and, and Freya very much hold that same regal divine feminine energy. So it's just a quick reminder to everybody that, I mean, the, the Norns themselves are all females, right? Um, the ability of seership, the ability of, of satyr is known to be a feminine thing. Um, and that's okay. It's okay. Like, um, we as heathens, male heathens, are very much in tune with our masculine side. I think that's what, um, kind of draws us to our faith. I mean, amongst many other things as well, but it is a very masculine culture, even though the women were highly regarded and the stories of Lagatha and other, um, female, uh, uh, generals and war chiefs that, that, um, were born on, on the island that, that, uh, Lagatha ended up on, um, there's stories and stories written about them, about them being, um, demigods, um, mixed with, um, the Valkyries. So, the, the, the point is I'm trying to make really, I guess, would be that um, in satirism, even when, when Odin um, represents himself as a satyr, there is a lot of feminine energy involved as well. And Odin is really good at keeping that balance. And as far as runes go, there's no better role model than Odin. Um, he is able to tap into those feminine energies um, and be perfectly okay with it, which is a wonderful thing. Um, there's nothing more amazing, nothing more beautiful in my eyes than a divine feminine energy. Anyway, I'm going to lose reception right here. I already know it. So... Please feel free to hit me up if you have any questions. If you want to expand on the conversation, I'm always up for that. Um, take care of each other, everybody. And let's all get to that moot in August. <laughs> Zach, if you see this, man, I can't wait to get out there. Much love to everybody. Much